All right, hello, I'm in Boston. We're gonna be doing a Shadow and Schmooze Get Ready With Me video where I put on some new makeup. I'm trying out some new stuff too. Catching up, it's gonna be like a bit of a summarization of my two months in New York City, what I think if I would move there. I'll have my last Shadow and Schmooze listed down below. I did that one when I was in New York. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Let's start chatting. I'm kind of a fan of the Panera, Panera bread K-Cups. They're pretty good. Good morning, I actually really like this background, this setup was the easiest setup I've had. Is it crooked though? Possibly. I think we're good. I'm at like this kitchen bar counter kind of thing. Well, let's start putting on makeup as I talk. This is the Haley's primer. I think this video is gonna be going up first, but I am gonna be having a Boston apartment tour video coming. So for foundation, I've been testing the Revolution Conceal and Glow. I have the shade F2. Full coverage, glowy. I've been really liking this, but it's a little bit too pink for me. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the Shiseido. 250 sand. I've also just been liking my foundation a little bit darker than my skin. Radiant version, not the normal. Amazing. It was in my best of 2021 video, which is now live. So you can check that out. I'll link it down below. So I wanted to do a debrief basically of New York, but I think of it if I would move there. If you're new here, I'm traveling around for however long. It started out as five months. Uh, it's gonna be longer than five months. <laughs> but I'm basically just traveling around living in different cities and then I'm gonna decide where I want to eventually move to. I just realized I forgot to mix that in. So I'm gonna add a little bit over top. Sometimes that's actually a good way. If you put on a foundation and you find that it's too light after you've already put it on, just go in with a darker foundation and you can almost use it in like the spots where you would typically bronze and it just warms up without having to do a full second layer basically. So just go in like the perimeter of your face and then your your bronzer area. And this Shiseido layers really well over literally anything too. So I was living in Manhattan for two months. So as I was living there, I was adding to this list on my phone called <laughs> Notice About NYC because I always find this to be the case wherever you are. Once you're there for like over a month, things kind of get normal. Like no matter what they are, at least for me, it doesn't take me super long to adjust to a new place and you kind of like forget the things that you originally noticed that were interesting. So I wanted to write them down as I was there. Maybe this is helpful hopefully if you're someone who's going to be moving to New York or you're considering moving there. So I would say my overall time, impression, everything of New York was amazing. I had like the best two months I've had in a while. I don't know, the other night I was looking at photos and I just like started crying. Wow, I'm not going to emotional right now. First of all, I'm just very thankful to be in the position to be able to do this. Doing what I'm doing right now and traveling around is just like something I've been wanting to do for years now. It just feels so good and I'm so thankful to be doing it right now. So I think that's part of it is just like I feel very much like in my element right now. I've always felt most myself when I'm traveling but I think especially with the pandemic and everything, I just have a whole new, even more appreciation for traveling. So I think that's part of it is that like, this was my first stop, but it was incredible. But there's a lot of reasons why I felt that way about New York. By the way, I'm trying some new makeup in today's video too. This is the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awaken Concealer. Ugh, oh, gotta love Sony. I am so team Sony. I've never had a Sony camera break on me. Canon, every single Canon camera I've had has broken or I've needed to get replaced or whatever. Oh, it's gonna be too dark. This was the only shade they had left like closest to my skin tone, number 15. This is definitely too dark. I definitely would need like one or two lighter. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. So I'm gonna mix in some of the Hourglass Spanish in the shade Birch. There's just this vibe to me about New York where it just feels like you're friggin' alive. Obviously it's very fast paced, go, 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 which I, I don't know, I can go both ways, honestly. I could like live somewhere very mellow or I could get that out by traveling somewhere like that. That could also be a downside for me is that it's just, it's a lot all the time. Realistically, that's what I'm trying to think is like, do I want that? Do I like that all the time? Or could I get that out by just visiting New York and doing what I just did, like staying there for a month out of the year or something or two months out of the year. It is something that I weirdly miss. Like what is funny, cause when you, I first got there, it did feel like, a lot all the time and then i don't know you just get kind of like used to it numb to it after a few weeks i was like all right <laughs> this is normal just as far as like daily small things because that's the thing like even if you're going to get i don't know cough drops from a bodega like every little thing in new york can feel like an event and i like that and I don't like that. This is a total introvert thing, but you know at times when you just don't feel like being around people, worrying about people, like saying anything, obviously then New York isn't an ideal place to be, but 
on the other hand, it makes like very mundane things feel like something. Like you can always see something, something's always going on. And I really like that. Is this making any sense? I'm not sure. I'm going out with the Kosas brow gel and this is what I've been doing for my brows lately. I'll take the Makeup by Mario brow gel. I really like this. It has a good hold. And then I'll go in with just a little bit of the Kosas Air Brow because I do like the shade of this one. I don't love the formula of this as much as some other brow gels. It fills in a lot, but I find that if you put on like a holding brow gel first, it almost grips onto the hairs better rather than like filling in your entire brow shape. So I just kind of use this to basically coat my natural brow hairs. And then I've been going in with my Joe brow pencil. It's in the shade black brown. So I did really love that just going anywhere like felt like a fun thing to do because you're just like walking around and seeing new things. And obviously that gets different once you've lived somewhere for a long time and you get to know everywhere. But New York is so freaking big and there's so many different, you know, places to see that I don't know. I feel like you could explore a different neighborhood like every freaking day. So going off the whole the whole vibe and keep in mind, this is my impression after two months, everywhere changes, everywhere's exciting at the beginning, but this is just like what I was feeling there. As far as work for me and like meeting people, it was really fun to be able to just connect with other people. There's so many people I figured out that live in New York or that we're visiting. Like it's just because everyone comes to New York all the time, my social life was busier in New York than it has been in the entirety of living in Seattle just because I know so many more people. But for what I do, I just found it to be so exciting. I had so many ideas for videos. There's events going on, not that I'm into events. Like even if I lived there, I don't think I would be going to a lot of events, but that is a thing if you're into that. I kind of just like doing my own thing. I'm not really an event kind of gal. I just was feeling like very, very fulfilled there and i haven't felt like that in like those aspects in a while so a big bonus to moving to new york would be i already know a handful of people and i also felt like because so many people move there all the time people are pretty open like compared to other cities people are pretty open to like meet friends and invite new people i found it personally to be so refreshing that that's the case because that is not the situation in seattle if you are unaware the seattle freeze is a thing where's my bronzer uh yeah look up the seattle freeze if you want to but when i first moved to seattle i heard about that and i was like mm, whatever it is what you make of it no People are, people are pretty cold in Seattle. It's hard to break into existing like friend groups and not just that, but like no one says hi on the street. No one says hi to each other. I grew up in San Diego where like when you're walking down the street, you say good morning and you help someone like if you need to. If you want a friendly Pacific Northwest city, go to Oregon. Oregon, <laughs> Oregonians are the best. Seattle, it's not the case. That's one of the very few cons to living in Seattle. I love Seattle so much, but yeah, the, the coldness was something I was not a fan of. By the way, this was M Cosmetics Terra, one of my favorites of all time. And I'm gonna go in with Milk Makeup Bionic Blush in Teleport. What I found in New York is people look cold on the street and maybe that's why they get, like, get that reputation, but when you actually need something or talk to someone, they go friggin' above and beyond to be helpful and help you out whether it's like a random person on the street or a person in a store or whatever. I found people to be super friendly. This is a very buildable blush, as you can see. So I'm just kind of layering it up. I do want it to be a pretty blushed look today, but also because there's so much natural light right here, it, I think it is like kind of toning it down on camera. So I'm just adding a little bit more so you guys can see it. You can pretty much always roam around and find something to do, whether it's just like exploring a different part of Central Park, going to a museum and just so many events, music, plays, Broadway, obviously comedy shows. Like there's just so much going on all the time that you can pretty much find something to do whenever you need to. I'm a big Broadway gal, which is kind of ironic because I can't stand like watching musicals on TV or like anytime, ooh, like when Grey's Anatomy started breaking out into like a musical situation, I really hate that. <laughs> I get so embarrassed. I don't like when things like randomly break out into song, but I love Broadway, I love musicals. I love watching musicals in real life, not on TV. But obviously if you're into Broadway, like that's the place to be. And I found this improv comedy theater that I loved called Magnet Theater. Best improv I've ever seen. It was hilarious. I went to another theater too that was not that great. But if you're in New York and wanna go to improv, go to Magnet Theater, go to their like Friday night improv show. I wanna say it was like 10 bucks or something too. So it's a good like 
more affordable activity to do. This is the Laura Mercier Celestial Light Powder. I'll link it down below. I talked about this in my last speed reviews. I like using this as a highlight. If you use it as a highlighter, it just gives a really beautiful, but like natural, good over texture kind of glow. It has like a pinky kind of undertone to it, but it's so pretty. Something I also really liked is New York weirdly felt like a college town to me just because of how easy it is to get around places. Like if you're trying to go meet a friend to work, it's so freaking easy because you can just hop on the subway, go a stop, go two stops, whatever, and then you're there. It just makes meeting up with people and getting to where you need to be super convenient because the subway can take you pretty much anywhere. And I did have a couple like situations where, you know, it's delayed and whatever, you have to take a taxi or walk, but it's not, I don't know, I didn't find it to be like big deal. And I just loved getting to know the subway. If you're going there, download the app City Mapper. That was the best one. They even tell you like what exit to get out at the subway station, depending on where you're going. But after a couple months, you kind of get it down. You get to know the stops and everything. I'm going with the Anastasia eye primer. Even like going to Brooklyn, Brooklyn seems far away, but it's really not. It was like a 15, 20 minute subway ride. I wrote, no one cares what you're doing or wearing in a good way. Yeah, literally no one cares. There's so many people that I found that to be so refreshing. New York, I guarantee you there's gonna be someone who is more dressed up than you on the street and is looking wild. So I really like that, that I felt like you can almost, even though there's so many people, it feels like you can like blend in in a way and literally no one cares what you're doing, what you're wearing. You can just be you, do whatever you want and that's that. Okay, this I'm very excited to try. I just picked this up yesterday. It's the new Wet n Wild Always Naked palette. So they had this one and then one that was a little bit warmer, but I loved some of the more cool tone looking shades in here, but you still have obviously a few warm ones in here as well. Food scene unparalleled. Yeah, man, the food in New York. I mean, obviously it's a big city. You can find pretty much anything, but one of the things I really liked is just the range of stuff that you can find. Like you can find bomb food under $10, or you can go, obviously, there's five billion million restaurants. And because it's New York, things are open pretty much all the time. People make dinner reservations way later. It felt like Europe in that way where like, you don't really go out to dinner until like at least eight. I mean, I get hangry, so I was going out earlier, but everything starts kind of later. Don't click out, but we're gonna talk about the weather just for about 20 seconds, okay? Just give me 20 seconds about the weather. Yeah, everyone likes to shit on Seattle for the rain. Here's the thing. It's gloomy in Seattle, not as gloomy as it used to be. It's gloomy in the winter, but it drizzles. It does not have torrential downpour very, oh, well, this year, of course it did, but normally it doesn't have full-blown flooding torrential downpour. Like Seattle's pretty mild usually with the rain. It rains a lot of the days, but the rain is super mild. Like you can just put on a hood and you're good to go. You don't have to carry an umbrella. New York, I got uh, very weirdly lucky with the weather. It was sunny, pretty much almost every day I was there. Like, I think I literally in two months had maybe like, I don't know, seven, six or seven like cloudy or rainy days. And it was extremely mild. I never got New York snow, which was kind of sad. I did want New York snow a couple days, but the couple days that it did rain, I understand why people say you have to carry an umbrella on the East Coast because it would be like sunny and whatever. And then all of a sudden you'd be in a friggin' hailstorm or torrential downpour and I didn't carry an umbrella, so I would just get soaked. Very, very rarely in Seattle does that happen. Did I keep it short enough about the weather that you're still here? <laughs> Comment down below. Outfit inspiration, it is so cool. Like you're in the city where magazines and blogs and whatever talk about as far as fashion. And I'm not even like, I'm not that into fashion as you guys know. It's so cool seeing some outfits where you're like, whoa, like that, it, that could be in a magazine, you know? And just being in like the epicenter of where a lot of stuff happens, good or bad. It's just a very eventful city. You can't argue that. So far, all the matte shades are blending out very easily in here. I don't know what my hair is doing today, by the way. It's uh, it's on like third day curls and just kind of fallen. So sounds 24 seven. Yeah, that could be a pro or con, depending on how you feel about that. There are sounds all the time. So for filming, that was a little challenging because sometimes I'd have to redo a sentence like 45 times because of a car honking or an ambulance or dog barking, people yelling outside, but that's, you know, just in a city. Also, again, depends on where you go, but for the most part, I did find food to be cheaper than Seattle. I'm curious, there's gotta be some kind of actual study on this, but Seattle compared to, I think so far every other city I've been, 
maybe besides London, Seattle, to me, the food seems the most expensive, like eating out groceries, whatever. The food in Seattle compared to New York, I think is more expensive, which is really messed up. You can find anything. That's one of the things I wrote. And it's very true, even though it's weird because in a city like New York, a lot of times you're going to like specific stores for things, but because there's so many stores everywhere, I feel like obviously there's still like targets and stuff like that, but city targets just, they don't, they're not the same. So even though it seems like it's more of an inconvenience, there's so many stores everywhere that literally within probably like half a mile, you can almost always find what you're looking for. And the delivery scene is wild. If you're into that, there's like 15 minute free delivery on groceries. I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I'm putting this all over the lid. Here we go. With anywhere you live, there's trade-offs. You just have to prioritize what's, you know, most important for you to have. Sam very kindly sent me the two new shades of the Smoke Reflect. That looks really pretty. This one, Entice. And then here's the color on the top. It's like a topper kind of thing. Those are kind of the main reasons why I would move to New York. Felt very alive, felt just inspired, excited, all the things, you know? It was good, good vibes all around. So the reasons why I'd be hesitant to move there, for me personally, there's only a couple really. I'm not saying I'm moving there or I'm not moving there, but these are just like, we're doing my, my pros and cons list right now, okay? This is a really pretty tone, especially if they have green eyes. I feel like it's kind of making them pop a little bit. Uh, taxes. <laughs> Honestly, big reason. New York's very expensive. Taxes, there's city and state tax, and if you own your own business, that's obviously something you have to consider because you're the one paying those taxes, baby. It's a, it's a very expensive city to be self-employed in. And then obviously the cost of living is very high renting. My ideal situation, what I would like to do is buy somewhere wherever I move and have my you know, monthly cost of living going towards the mortgage. So it's actually going towards something, not just being thrown away on thousands and thousands of dollars in a city. I am big on saving, big on investing. I like enjoying life with my money, but also being smart about it. I have the majority of my money invested and saved, and that's something that is important to me, but also I don't want to regret making a decision because of that, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to be 80 and looking back and being like, man, I should have just done it for a couple years and lived in New York City. The downside to that is I really feel like wherever I move next, I kind of want to like lay down roots. Like I don't really want to move somewhere for a couple years and then do a whole nother move in a couple years. I'm not opposed to it. Like I do, we all know I do like moving, but I really want to like lay down some roots, meet people, have a good community and stay where I'm gonna be for a while and just travel a lot. So if that's my goal, New York doesn't super make sense because what I could do is live somewhere a bit more affordable, buy there, thankfully, and just make it a priority each year to go live in another place for a month or two. Then I would have lower cost of living on a monthly basis. It would be going towards something and I'd be investing, but then I could still you know, go live in New York for a couple months or go live in another city for a couple months if I wanted to. I recognize that that's a very fortunate position to be in. I don't know why I just put that on my fourth finger. Ooh, that is really pretty on top of there, wow. I feel like financially, I would feel a lot better about that. That's like kind of what I'm leaning towards right now, but we'll see, who knows, maybe I'll end up moving to New York. We don't know, I don't know. If you've read The 4-Hour Workweek, there's things I agree with, disagree with in that book, but it is really interesting to read just for like perspective. One of the things I really like that he talks about is mini retirements through your life where if you're just like hustling and working and killing yourself so that you can save and invest and save and invest and then all of a sudden you're 60 and you're like, hmm, <laughs> I have all this money but I didn't actually enjoy it throughout my life and that's how I wanna live. Like I still wanna be smart with my finances and save but also recognize that like this is life, you only get one. I'll leave that book linked down below if you do wanna check it out. I think I'm gonna take, what am I gonna take? Maybe this shade and just pop a little bit right on the center. This one's more of like, it looks like kind of topper shade, doesn't look super pigmented. Yeah, it's kind of like a glittery topper. That's kind of why Chicago, I think right now, is still at the top of my list. Oh, we gotta talk about Boston too. Wow, gotta speed it up here, this is gonna be a long one. But Chicago. Cost of living, very affordable compared to other big cities. Still a big city, still closer to travel like other places. And I just, I love Chicago. So if I lived in Chicago, I could kind of do what I was just talking about. Just powdered my under eyes using Glowish in one. I use Bare Minerals, that peach though. This is one of my favorite blushes as of right now. 
especially if I have on a very glowy base because this is a matte blush, so it kind of just bounces out nicely. Hello, sun. Okay, this is the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Eyeliner. I talked about this on Instagram stories, but I'm a little bit confused about this. I, I have the old version, I'm pretty sure, but a lot of people are saying that they reformulated it and the new version isn't as good. So if you get this, just like beware. I don't know how the new version is. It's a few bucks, so I guess you could try, but I have been friggin' loving this eyeliner for using on the top and just smudging it because it smudges, but it doesn't transfer at all. It stays on all day, but I really don't want you to get it and then it'd be like a shitty new version. Dude, I can't find my my angled brush or my flat brush. So I'm just gonna use the kind of angled one. Doesn't do as good of a job. Okay, so let's talk about Boston. So I actually, wait, rewind. At the end of New York, I was supposed to go to San Diego for Christmas for the holidays. And it was right when there was the massive, I mean, still is massive Omicron surge. Got COVID in New York, so I was by myself in the New York City apartment over the holidays, which I know happened to so many people. So if that was you, I feel ya. I'm just thankful it was very mild. I am double vaccinated and boosted. So I think that's why it was so mild. And you know, the new variant is supposed to be more mild to begin with. Basically the first few days I felt very sick, had a lot of brain fog. I did a 10 day quarantine in the apartment. And then by day six is when I started feeling a lot of fatigue. I got questions on Instagram about how it was affecting my other health stuff. And whenever I get like sick on top of something else or have, you know, like when I was on Accutane, it's hard to figure out the effects of one thing versus another because if you're, if you're level of feeling good, like right now, you know, I am in pain in my body. So if a normal person's like here and you're here on a day-to-day -day basis, when anything else happens, it, it just kind of exacerbates everything else, but it's hard to tell what's what. I also got my period and had some fun cramps on top of that. So that was just, you know, great timing as per usual. But no, I'm just thankful that it was mild. And luckily my parents, even though I, you know, didn't see any family over Christmas, they were still able to come to Boston right after. So I was with them for New Year's in Boston. Basically the timing with my quarantine ending was really lucky. I just stayed there. I had to cancel my flights and everything, but just took a train from New York to Boston, which I would way rather take a train any day than flying. I just love trains, they're the best man. And then my parents flew and met me in Boston. I'm gonna put lashes on, so I think I'm just gonna keep it at that. What I like to do though is then use my liquid liner and just go right against the lash line. It just adds like an extra dramatic touch. This is my NYX Epic Ink Liner, I use it every day. So you can see this eye versus this eye, it just adds a little bit more definition. So my parents met me in Boston. The first couple of days we stayed in different hotels. Went to the whole, you know, New Year's shebang. I think I'm gonna do a little bit on the lower lash line, so I'm gonna take that shade again. So keeping in mind, I've only been in Boston for about a week and a half now. I've seen a lot. I've been a lot of places so far. <laughs> It's pretty small. It's cute. I like it as a place to visit. Like I'm enjoying my time here. It's very cute, but I knew within about uh, 24 hours <laughs> that I didn't want to live here. It just reminds me too much of Seattle, which I love. Boston reminds me of like an East Coast version of Seattle. It feels very small to me. And I know that's after coming from New York. So like pretty much anything's going to feel small but it just has like a similar vibe to Seattle and just going for a bigger kind of change, like a different kind of change. I don't want it to feel like I'm still in Seattle. And there's a lot of different like, you know, day trips and weekend trips you can do from Boston on the train. So I think I'm gonna try to go to Maine for probably just like a couple nights. I love Maine, I've been there once before, but I'm just like big lighthouse gal. I keep thinking it's straight and then it gets crooked. But I don't know, I'm just gonna have to see because I also have a couple big work projects happening right now. So I think I'm gonna be mostly like focusing on work the next few weeks and trying to get ahead because after this, the next city I'm going to, I know it's gonna be like New York in the sense that I'm just gonna have, I think a lot going on. So I wanna be able to still obviously enjoy the cities while I'm there and like explore, but also I'm like trying to find the balance of working and staying on top of everything. So I think for me, Boston, since I, I don't know a single person <laughs> in Boston, by the way, I used to, they all moved. So I'm still exploring while I'm here, but at the same time, I think this is gonna be a big like 
catch up on work kind of trip for me. I think this apartment's like on top of the tea or something because every like half hour, the whole thing will shake. I really wanna try this lash primer. It's the Ardell 3D Lash Primer. I think my favorite thing I've seen in Boston so far is the Isabella Gardner Museum. There's a whole Netflix documentary about that museum, but it was the biggest art robbery in history, half a billion dollars. What is happening? Is this just like totally dried up? Mm, okay. Yeah, nothing is coming out. It feels really light. It feels like nothing's in here. I think I do want to put lashes on, so I think I'm just going to do my usual mascara. But I'm going to do a thin coat of this. This is the Lottie London Super Fake Amazing Drugstore Mascara. But if you want the drama with this mascara, you can get it. Do a couple layers and it's intense. Okay, I have these Glam Light Fry Lashes that actually look pretty, pretty, pretty. So, oh, okay, here are the lashes. I did want to say thank you to everyone who purchased a candle so far from my collection with Anchored Northwest or got one for the holidays. I loved seeing all of the photos of like boyfriends, husbands getting you the candles. It was so cute. I'll leave them linked down below. And I also wanted to say, because I've gotten some questions, they aren't permanent, so they're not going to be around for forever. So if you do want to stock up on some, now would be the time, folks. I'm gonna put the amount raised on the screen right here as of today for Healthwell Foundation. This foundation is looking good. Every time I put this on, I'm like, wow, I love the coverage, I love the glow. I do have on underneath today the Polish Choice BHA, which makes your skin freaking glowy. So the lashes are on, and then I put on my MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara for the bottom. I'm gonna go in with my usual Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. This just goes with so many things. I'm gonna try out a new lipstick I haven't tried before, but I think this will be a good one to pair with it. Oh man, do you ever, do you guys get chin hairs? <laughs> AKA whiskers, wow, I feel like my mom, I remember vividly like, what, sorry mom, I'm like totally outing you on this. I remember <laughs> sitting in the car when she would like pick me up from school and she would be like plucking a whisker out of her chin. It happens to everyone, if you're hairy. <laughs> Okay, how cool is this packaging? These are new lipsticks by Makeup Forever. This is the shade 130. I think this one's a little darker. And then here is 132. Yeah, this one looks a bit lighter and kind of peachier. But I'm gonna first go in with the darker one, 130. What does this smell like? Oh, this has like a cream finish. Wow, I can't put my finger on the scent. It smells like a little bit fruity, but not overboard. Ooh, it feels very comfortable, like moisturizing. I might layer a little bit of the lighter one over top. Oh, it actually looks a little pinky. I have this Glam Light Gloss. I got I got these so long ago, but my mom brought them when they were just here because I was like, I need some, some new makeup to test out. So she brought some of these. Oh my God, this reminds me of, remember Whitening Lightning? How they had the mirror on the side? Like kind of a, like a mauve -y color. It was very light. Okay, I don't know if that did a whole lot. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna add the Fenty Hot Chocolate Heat. Really, wow, layering up the lips here. There we go. I love this gloss has like a really pretty coolish undertone to it. All right, so this is the final look. I'm gonna have all the makeup I used on my face today listed down below in the description box if you wanna check anything out, along with earrings, nail color, everything else is always down below. Here's a close up of the makeup in case you wanna see what everything looks like very up close. Really, really digging this foundation. And I am now very close, very close to having the next foundation updates roundup video done. So my full thoughts on this foundation will be coming then too. First impressions on this palette, I liked it. It was 10 bucks, but if you use a CVS coupon, you can almost always get like a 40% off coupon. So you could get it for, you know, about six bucks and everything blended out really easily and like how it turned out. I think the next video I post will be the Boston apartment tour vlog, but thank you for watching. Thanks for all of your messages and comments and everything throughout the past couple months. They've just been very lovely and I appreciate you guys, but love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.